So this is the ash I'm going to be using to make those legs. And there's a pretty decent chunk missing out of one side, but I want this piece of lumber to go as far, far as possible, and I'm going to need some longer lengths. So instead of chunking it out to make the legs, I'm going to start by ripping three inch sections and then cutting the legs to length that way. I ended up using that first piece I cut off, um, I'm going to use this on the back uh, of the seat and the reason for that is because there's a fair amount of sap wood in it and I don't want to use that wood in the legs so I use, I'm going to use this middle piece for the legs. And you could tell just even though this one's a little longer you could tell even by picking them up that this one's much denser and a higher quality of wood. So now that I have my strip, I can go and trim these to length on my, I could trim these on my radial arm saw and then add the 10 degree angle on either side. Before I did that, I took this scrap piece of 2x4 and I cut a 10 degree angle on either end. And the reason I did that is because if you had this piece of wood standing up and down, because this bench is going to be 18 inches tall, and they're through mortises, so my legs are going to be 18 inches tall. If you cut this at 18 inches, you actually lose a little bit of that length because it's on an angle. So I cut this just to see how much that is, and you do end up losing a quarter of an inch. So this is cut at about 18 and a quarter, and I'm going to use that to mark and cut my four legs. So I trimmed that 10 degree angle on one edge of all of these rough cuts and then I used my template pattern to line up that angle and draw a mark at the top and now I'm going to trim all the tops so these are all the same length. I have this tendoning jig and I raise my blade to three inches because even though the thickness of my tabletop is only about two and seven eighths, it does vary enough that I want to have a little bit left over to shave down or sand if I have to. And then I lined up my blade with where I want to cut my shoulders and I should be able to run all these pieces through, flip them, and run them through again. In order to finish cutting these tenons, I set my miter gauge to 80 degrees, which will cut through that line that I want. I also moved my fence over to line up all of these and lowered my blade to just cut off this shoulder chunk. So now I could run all these through and cut off this excess, and then my tenons will be done. I started cutting my mortises yesterday and I quickly realized that my original plan of having these be angled mortises was just going to take a lot more time than I have for this project. So I ended up compromising, this is what the original tenon would have looked like going into an angle mortise and I kind of compromised on these and it's a half angle. So I cut the mortise straight and then trimmed off the back side of my tenons on all these pieces. Then the mortise can go in, the tenon could go into the mortise straight and then be angled to that 10 degrees. Then the wedge that I originally cut off of these can be used to fill that space in the front. 
it's not really what I originally wanted, but you won't be able to tell from the top side that these are cut tenons. They'll look like angled tenons, and I can cut these mortises out in less than a half an hour, and it would have taken substantially longer to do it if they were angled. This is my last one to cut, and I've kind of got this down to a science now. So before I trimmed these, I marked center on the tips of both of my tenons. This one's kind of black in the back, so it's harder to see, but it is back there. So now that these tenons are a little bit smaller than the original one that I drew these marks with, I'm going to line these center points back up with my center line that went through both of my original mortise holes. And then mark the sides. So that's now my new marks for my mortise. And the way I cut these now, instead of doing them angrily, is I'm going to just cut these straight down and then when I get halfway through I'll flip it because you don't want any tear out on the top side. This is I'm going to the bottom side right now and just square up these holes. I'm a little over halfway down the depth of that mortise, so now I'm going to flip this and then start it from the other side. I fitted that last leg and then lowered this onto the ground just to see how it sits on the floor and I'm pretty happy with the fit so far. Um, with just those four legs I sat on it and it's super sturdy as is and all of my tenons come through my through mortises with just enough protrusion so that I could sand them even and those are going to work out fine. So now I'm going to put this back on my table, flip it upside down, and start adding the cross members to sure up the feet. With those mortises done for the legs and the fit being good, I'm now going to add a piece in between both legs on either side. So using the same lumber, I cut a 3 inch piece by 16 inch piece of that ash, and then I lined it up on my legs by measuring down the same distance. So it's 5 and 7 sixteenths on both sides. Then I mark the tops and the bottoms just so I could realign it easier. And on the back side I marked where the angle of that tenon is going to be. Now I can go back out my shop and cut tenons on either end of these pieces, come back in and then cut a receiving mortise on the two legs using that cut tenon for my layout guidelines. And I'm going to do that on both sides. I cut those tenons and then realigned this back up with my original marks. And now I can mark exactly where I'm going to put that through mortise.
So even with cutting my tenon straight, I'm still going to have to drill this mortise at an angle. So I'm just using a piece of plywood to prop it up to about that 10 degrees to drill my holes. So I've been messing around with these new lapel microphones to get better sound quality on some of these videos, but unfortunately sometimes it doesn't pick up any sound at all. So I'm going to try and remember what I was talking about during this part of the process. And basically I'm adding a stretcher piece in between the two legs to shore up the two legs. And I'm using a dummy piece of plywood to line everything up on center and I'm going to be cutting two mortises as well as two tenons on the ends of the stretchers. Cut that middle brace and put a tenon on the end of it just like I did all the other pieces. And then I took apart my legs and I found center on these two trapezoidal shaped cross members and then measured for where my mortise would go, coming up the thickness of the mortise as well as the width of the mortise. And now I could cut those on my drill press and this time it will be easier because they're just going to be straight mortises. With this last chunk of that ash I have, I'm going to be making the components for the back, at least the frame of it. I'm going to need five feet of this to make the, the arms across the back, but then this chunk at this end I already marked. I'm going to cut it on my radial arm saw and I'm going to cut two pieces that will make up the angled portion of the back and will hold up the entire back. This is about three and a half inches wide and I'm going to keep it that width. So I'm going to trim this down and get it to the size I want and then start making tenons on the end of them. And the back is going to be the same 10 degree angle that the legs are. I'm aiming for the back of this bench to be in the 18 to 20 inch range. Now, there's going to be two tenons on the bottoms of these pieces connecting it to that seat. So I'm going to cut these to about 21 inches. And that will give me enough, and that will still give me enough to put a sizable tenon on the bottoms and still reach that height window I have. So I went ahead and put that 10 degree angle on the bottom of this piece and then I mapped out where I want my tenon. So I don't really want to mess with angled tenons or angled mortises on this. So what I did was I marked where that 10 degrees is going to be where it's going to fit against the back of that bench and then I drew a straight tenon from there. So I'm going to cut this straight so you'll have these little wedges and then I could drill a straight mortise into the back of my bench and that just makes life a lot easier. Also because this is uh, pretty dense wood, this is ash and the fat part of this is going to be angled, there's still going to be a substantial amount of wood making contact with the bench so I'm not worried about losing more than you normally would if you made this an angled peep. So I have my tall fence set up on my table saw and I raise my blade to cut that where I want it and I'm going to try running this along 
the top of here and see how that goes. So I have these back inside and this is how they're going to be oriented on the bench. And because of the um, unsymmetrical shape of the bench, I ended up uh, referencing where I'm putting these off of my through tenons versus the edge because there's more edge on the other side than this side. So I marked about two inches over and that's where I started referencing for the mortise. Now I wanted it in between this gap so that you'll have plenty of seating room for your butt and because it will reinforce this spot. So Using this line as my center line, I took my tenons and I marked center like I did on all the other ones and then lined up on both sides center with that center line of the bench and then I just traced around it and that's going to be where I'm going to put my mortise. Now since I cut these tenons straight, I can make a straight mortise and this will slide right in there. Um, then those are going to be an inch. Now obviously I can't use my drill press for this anymore so I'm going to try freehanding as much as I can of these and these tenons are only about two inches deep so they're not going to be through tenons I'm, but I'm going to drill two inches into each and you can see I marked the other side as well. I mounted that spade bit into a corded drill just so I don't have to worry about having enough power to get through this bench. And I also put a piece of electrical tape as a reference, a rough depth guide for that two inch spaces I'm going to need. And now I'm just going to start drilling into here. <laughs> 